We are the Coachville STEM team, and we are very happy to present the, our product, the Knee Nerd. So, I am Ian Applebaum, I am the project leader. I'm Malcolm Kenyon, I'm the public relations manager. I'm Anton Zimmerman, I'm one of the engineers. I'm Kendall Wilkes, I'm the biomedical researcher. I'm Brian Cole, and I'm also an engineer. So, you may be wondering what the Knee Nerd is. Well, first of all, it is a C. The C stands for Coatesville because we have a lot of Coatesville pride. Um, and NERD stands for Neural Electro Recording Device. Um, our device is a brace. I think before we get into the device, we should talk about the problem. And that problem is knee injuries. Just six years ago, there were almost 10.5 million visits to doctor's office because of simple knee, knee injuries. Now, uh, in the corner, there's going to be citations. Um, people ages 15 to 24 have the highest rate of injury, and that is our prime demographic. Knee problems are among the most common work-related injuries in Pennsylvania, and the knee is the most commonly injured joint by adolescent athletes, with around 2.5 million injuries annually. Now, you may say, What's the need for this knee nerd? Well, sports players, half of all injuries in sports are knee related. And the knee nerd may help speed up that recovery process so they could be out of the field faster. The elderly could use the knee nerd to help with the therapist to work through the day. This relates to me personally because I work at Brookdale, I work at Freedom Village at Brookdale, an elderly care home. A man there, Mr. Stark. Uh, he's a pretty nice guy, you know, I like to talk with him a lot. I consider him my friend. He recently had a fall in his home. He suffered, he, hit, he hurt his knee, and now he's not going to be able to walk for the next couple months. Mr. Stark is very broken up because he's an active man, but now he's confined to an electric scooter. Throughout the project, I've held Mr. Stark very close to me. You know, every time I see him at work, I like to fill him out on how's it going. He really is... I feel like he's part of the team. Mr. Stark is my prime drive for making this product. Finally, I'd like to go over some overuse injuries. The first of them is bruises. Yes, bruticis, which is an inflammation of your brusa. The second is patellar tendonitis, or jumpers. It's an inflammation of your patellar tendon. It's a tendon that connects your patella to your quadriceps muscle. Patellofemoral pain syndrome or runner's knee, is a mu muscle weakness or minor softening of the cartilage under the kneecap, and it may cause an abnormality in the movement of the patella over your femur. Osgood Schla Schla Schlater disease is an inflammation of the patellar tendon where it attaches to the tibia. It occurs in growing adolescence, and that, again, is our prime demographic. I'm going to pass the presentation over to Kendall, one of our group members, who had a run-in with knee trouble. So just after my first varsity season in field hockey last year, uh, I noticed I had really bad knee pain. So I went to the doctor and they told me that I had to go physical therapy for two months. So I did the physical therapy and I realized that the pain just kept increasing. So I went to a new doctor who gave me a different diagnosis and they told me to go to physical therapy again for another two months. I did that physical therapy and it still wasn't helping. So I went to a third doctor um, the third doctor finally realized in my MRI that I had gashes in the cartilage under my kneecap. Uh, so he said that a cortisone shot would be the best thing and it should fix it. Uh, I got the cortisone shot, but it didn't work. So he said that I needed to get surgery. So when I got put under for surgery, I thought they were just going to fix the gashes in the cartilage and then I'd be fine. But when I woke up, uh, they told me I tore my meniscus and I tore another ligament and <coughs> I have a tracking disorder and the gashes in my cartilage. Um, so after the surgery, I was on bed rest for a couple days, and then I had to start my physical therapy again. So I did that for another five months with our mentor, Sherry Heim, my physical therapist. Um, so that was the long process of it. And now Brian's going to talk about the knee nerd. So Brian, what is knee nerd? The knee nerd is a knee brace that records myoelectric activity from your quadricep muscles and sends it to a companion app via the Bluetooth chip. And NERD stands for Neuro Electro Recording Device.
Now Kendall will talk about the anatomy of your knee. Patella is your kneecap. Uh, under your kneecap is the patella tendon and then your medial and your lateral meniscus. So your lateral meniscus is on the outside and medial is on the inside for middle and medial. Uh, and we also have to know the quadricep muscles. So there's four quad muscles but our device records three. You place the electrodes on the rectus femoris and the vascus medialis and that reads the myoelectric data. Um, the quad is the first muscle to shut down during injury, uh, which is why you want to place the electrodes there, because we're recording when the muscles are working and when they're firing. Uh, Anton's going to talk about the hardware that does this. So, as Kendall said, the sensors read the myoelectric data from your quadricep muscles. <clears throat> what that does, what it then, uh, sorry. What it then does is send it to the sensor board, the Advanced Technologies Muscle Sensor, which smooths the data and makes it readable for our microcontroller, the SparkFun Pro Micro Board. Our microcontroller then sends the data via Bluetooth to the companion app through the Adafruit Bluefruit Bluetooth chip. And on that note, we should talk about the app itself. So, our app, the NeNerd app, does show and visualize this data that is brought into the sensors. We're now going to simulate how this works. So I'm going to have Kendall uh, walk across the uh, uh, floor to show what our device you know, looks like, active. As you can see, the device is measuring the myoelectric data, and it's displaying it as three separate graphs. We have sensor one, two, and three in our colors red, white, and blue. Uh, each peak is the, her right leg walking, um, and the valley is the other. So we're now going to stop the demonstration. Um, as you can see, this could be very useful in the medical field. Uh, instead of giant uh, machines that cost $7,000 plus, uh, we can have the knee nerd in the physical therapist's office. Speaking of physical therapists, our mentor, Dr. Sherry Hine, um, we're going to have Kendall talk a little bit more about her because she was her physical therapist. So our mentor this year is my previous physical therapist, Dr. Sherry Hine. Uh, Sherry works at NovaCare Rehabilitation Center in Thorndale, Pennsylvania. She uh, has worked there for about two and a half years now. She attended Elizabethtown College and got her doctorate at Widener University. My name is Sherry Hein. I'm a physical therapist. I am in an outpatient physical therapy setting. The Knee Nerd would be beneficial for two purposes in physical therapy work, especially in an outpatient setting. One major purpose would be for research to check the injury or what happens after a surgical protocol. So if a surgeon does a certain surgery, what muscles or tendons are involved and how physical therapy should proceed. If they find out that there is no major injury to the body, then maybe a need for physical therapy is not warranted and we can save some money. Check the effectiveness of um, the physical therapy protocol. Is it working? Is it working fast enough? Especially for an athlete, if I have this information, I can give specific details of, yes, the muscles are all firing properly, and the person, patient, is ready to return. I'm going to just talk about our budget now. Um, I'm just going to go over our three main boards that Anton mentioned. That Anton mentioned before. Uh, there's the blue fruit low energy Bluetooth breakout board, which is 1995, got that from Adafruit. All that that does is it takes the data given to it by the SparkFun Pro Micro and it sends it to the companion app on your phone. The second and most important board, in my opinion, is a MyAware muscle sensor. 
That's $37.95. We have got three of those from Adafruit. That uh, reads all the myoelectric activity from your quadricep muscle and sends it to our third board, the Spark Fund Pro Micro. That is $19.95, and we got that from Spark Fund. Um, that just kind of is the middleman between the Bluetooth and the myoware muscle sensor, and it converts the data between the two. Our total cost is $369.60, which is considerably less than the possible $8,000 or more dollars for machines to do the same thing. We are $130.40 under budget, which with our $750, we plan to put towards the improvements that Anton is going to talk about next. So there are two main improvements we plan on making to the meter. And that's adding onboard data storage and sewing the materials into the meter. Adding onboard data storage would eliminate the need for the companion app, which is essentially what it relies on currently. A large, considering the fact that a large portion of our demo, a large portion of our demographic is the elderly who may not have access to devices capable of running the companion app, this could be a major benefit and open up the Nina to more, or a lot more you know, people. So, how we plan on doing that is with micro SD cards. The SD card reader itself is $9.95 from Spark Fun. The SD card is, or micro SD card, sorry, is $7.99 from Amazon. And our next improvement is selling the materials into the meter. What this will do is make it a lot more aesthetically pleasing and a lot more marketable. The total cost of our, of our improvements would be $40.85, plus the cost of testing the improvements and possible production. So I'd like to take a minute to talk about what STEM means to us and what STEM means to the knee nerve. I'm going to just take it bit by bit. So science. Science is more a biological science. You know, we have to learn about the knee, the different muscles, the different parts of the knee, and how the knee works. Technology. We had to use the three boards that I've mentioned a couple times, and that Anton had mentioned. We had to learn how to code for these boards, and we had to learn how they work together and how they interact. Engineering kind of goes along with technology, where it's more focused on the boards. If Kendra will show you the knee nerve, uh, we, we made a little pocket in there to kind of hold everything together. Uh, in that pocket, there's the breadboard and the battery. Um, whatever, thank you. Um, that just, we had to make it so that everything fits together nicely in a small compartment on the knee. Math is probably the most important part, and you might be thinking, well, why is that? Two plus two doesn't equal Nina. But we use the math for coding. Um, Someone who helped us learn how to code was Logan Burton. Without him, this project wouldn't have been possible. He helped us learn how to code the app that Ian had chosen. You know, how, uh, how to make the communication between the Bluetooth and the phone happen very seamlessly. Um, I'd like to take, I'd like to finish up by letting Brian talk about the engineering principles. saw how many students had knee problems and one way that they could be solved is using the knee nerd so they could get back to their sports and daily lives faster. We created the knee nerd so it would collect myoelectric data from the quadricep muscles and send it to the companion app via the Bluetooth chip in the knee brace. We tested the communications between the microcontroller and the, and the phone using the Bluetooth app, and we also altered the placement of the sensors to get the best test results. Our, our original idea
deal with something much more multi-purposeful, measuring the blood pressure and the heart rate, but we soon found out that it would be a much better product if we focused on one function and had it work great and had it work great. We realize that not everything can go as planned and there are a few bumps in the road for projects that can be expected and a few of them were was we ordered the boards and the lily pad we got the wrong board so we had to reorder that and wait for it to come in and the sensors for the brace came in late so we had to work around that and that's it so yeah that is our presentation we hope you enjoy um, and that you're all having a nice day. Uh, if you want to take a closer look at the product, that's also fine. Um, uh, are there any questions? Yeah, could Kendall come out here so we can see? Why not? <laughs> I also have a demo version of the app in my pocket, if you'd like to see that as well. Notice how she flexes the lights are. Um, so, okay. so, is there any painted lines? Could you show the app on the no. screen? Um, <laughs> I wish I could, but I can show it to you right now since you're. Yeah, she's moving. Um, yes. So, so, you don't have any discomfort, there's any heat or anything? Yeah, the, no, there is no. Um, you wouldn't say there's any discomfort. No, it's, it's just like a normal brace. I, I have a whole drawer full of braces. <laughs> uh, so. Unfortunately. <laughs> so, yeah. how long would you wear the. They have, um, how many uses did um, our mentor say? Uh, she so we like have reusable ones, so you could probably get up to at least six or seven times. Mm -hmm. And they're all um, uh, replaceable. They have little snaps. Yeah, so they, can, they snap it. You can take off the brace, replace them. They're very inexpensive. And I, and I didn't hear you mention ACL injuries. Is there any uh, application for ACL? Um, most likely. Uh, this is mostly for medical research, so there could be additional sensors to measure the ACL. One of the main reasons that we, we did it was um, I went from, you know, playing sports every day, I got my injury, and then I was on bed rest, and I couldn't do anything, and then I went back to school, and all I did was walk around, and it was really tiring, because I lost all my quad muscles, like nothing was there, so that was some of the reason. And it was hard, because she does a lot of sports, and, you know, mm -hmm. um, and that was a primary reason we chose the project. We wanted to incorporate biology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so, yeah, we have the, the demo. So you can see here. Um, and also I mentioned that you can go back and see the data uh, as a follow time. Uh, so if I uh, keep it going and I click this, you can actually go back in time to previous data. Okay. Yeah. Did you guys code this yourself? Yes, we, um, but we did have a lot of help. The, the problems with the tools that we had to learn, um, it, there's just Xcode and things are very complex, and I you need all the help. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I'm a little unclear. Is the intent here to gather a lot of data to help the recovery of the specific athlete and her injury, or is the intent to generate to create data for more of a meta analysis about this sort of injury? In it actually could be both, but mostly right now it's the first. Um, she uh, the data. The way we picture this is that um, the physical therapist could give this device to the wearer and she could actually see like this data and look at the graphs and say, and this is a normal graph, so everything looks perfectly normal. But what if the data was off? Then it could send immediately to the physical therapist and she could go, oh wow, um, maybe you're working too hard, maybe you should you know, uh, cut back a little bit, like carrying too many heavy bags. Of that you can base your program off of what, how your muscles are working. Is there an opportunity for biofeedback here? Yes. Yeah, um, and we wanted to make the device more multi-purpose, as Brian said. We wanted um, like a heart rate. To be more competitive with like a Fitbit or something. Um, and then uh, the other beauty of it, as Anton mentioned, the onboard data storage would allow you to be tetherless from the phone. Well, and you could go back and just live without, throughout your life, which most um, health rate sensors don't 
really do necessarily right now. It is a growing field. <laughs> so, um, any anything else? You guys did an excellent job, all of you. Yeah, yeah very good. Yeah. Yeah.